And welcome back to Project Hospital. In the previous series, we covered the campaigns that are available to play within Project Hospital. But in this series, uh, I thought we would take a look at the new DLCs that have come out for the game. In fact, there has been a wealth of updates since we last played Project Hospital, including a free DLC that anybody who owns the game can get called Doctor Mode, and a new DLC pack which is available for $6.99 on Steam, and it's called Hospital Services, and it offers new departments, items, has introduced new events that pop up during gameplay, which just adds a little more variety to your daily routine, which I've been really enjoying. And finally brought visitors to the hospital for your patients that are currently staying in your ward. While the new services DLC pack does have a new hospital pre-built for you to play with all the new departments that are now available, I have decided to return to a sandbox hospital that I have been making during Project Hospital live streams. This sandbox hospital called Royal Peeping Hospital has been built from the ground up and we do have build costs switched on. There is still a lot of work to be done in this hospital but you can see here that we currently have a few departments in operation. Um, there's still some original departments that we don't yet have which I would love to uh, get into this hospital during the series. I've actually never played with cardiology or neurology from the original game or only a very tiny amount so it'd be really nice to get them into this hospital. Um, and then we've got our new departments here and you can see this one is activated um, but I've done it hardly anything with it because I'd like to add these new DLC features during the series and I thought in this particular episode to kick off the series we could actually take a tour of this hospital as a lot has changed since the end of the last uh, stream. If you watch the stream I want to stress that the changes I have made have been to decorate the departments that we already had in the stream. I've tried my very best to not add new things to the hospital in terms of departments or, or whole new rooms although there have been a couple of additions which we'll cover as we tour through the updates back when the hospital started it was one small room which was a very makeshift GP office which slowly grew and expanded out into the rest of the field that we had but that first building was retained as a reception area for the rest of the hospital. But it has changed dramatically since the stream. And here is what it looks like now. Ta-da! Look at this! <gasps> it's very, very different, I know. Um, and uh, like most of this hospital completely rammed with stuff so you can see here um, that we have staff rooms either side with a toilet um, and that's not just for these reception uh, staff here um, but also for the all the GP doctors that are just through the way um, and what's nice about this uh, reception is that it supports all the different departments so even though we haven't opened these yet that which is why we can see that these are set as corridors um, because they are not yet active these departments but they do have their own reception areas um, so that this reception can support expansion through the double doors of course is um, the waiting area for emergency this is just emergency this is not all the departments this is just what the emergency waiting room looks like and first thing in the morning it can be quite busy in fact i have seen it a lot more rammed than this this is actually quite quite low in in numbers um oh no look some a patient is collapsing um this is not good we can see here that there's there's an underlying problem that could cause uh, further collapses once they've uh, picked her up um, so this this here code blue treat this patient with the same priority as critical patients is a doctor mode feature um, and I'm a big fan of code blue um, so we're going to pop her on code blue so she's going to be treated um, yeah with uh, with diligence and care uh, critical there we go um, because yeah something there's an underlying issue with her and I 
you know, we'd like to keep the crashing down to a bare minimum. So I, some, uh, a thing that I tend to do in the mornings is look for rocking patients and see if they've got any of these types of flashing symptoms. And if they have, I can stick them on a code blue. But they, they don't look too bad, do they? They, they look all right. We can see here that um, they have food and drink. I've even got them some music to listen to. They've got their own toilets while they wait as well. Um, I've even popped some bookcases up here. This is a new bookcase that comes with the DLC um, that goes on the wall. And it's an extremely versatile uh, piece of equipment. It's much better than the other bookcase, uh, which would take up an entire area like a, a vending machine. This just pops on the wall and it still offers that entertainment or the study boost that some of the doctors can get from it. And patients love to read these books and do frequently read them. And what's also nice about this is it's uh, you can place this bookcase in a lot more places where it's still accessible um, then you can even the posters and posters of course also uh, provide entertainment to to patients while they're waiting if they're getting a bit bored they can read a poster but the, you often have to put these posters where there are no other items in order for them to access them this however above the chair is absolutely fine and in fact they're really great in the ward as well because they'll they'll read the books there but they do stand inside the bed while accessing the bookcase so there are some issues there but i would rather have that glitch so that they can access the bookcase in this location than them take try and fix that glitch by taking it away and making it so the bookcase can only be accessed in similar ways to the poster i don't want that so don't don't don't, don't please don't change that don't ever change that and then of course the rest of the building has changed so the the this large building look at this look at this it's so much neater and clean now so this um in the past um yeah it was floorboards drywall we had beds just out in the corridors uh ICU was here, everything was here, everything was occurring. Once we upgraded from the initial reception area, we upgraded to this this space and, and it just the chaos spread. Um, because you know, you've got money troubles and you just you need to try and treat as many patients as possible. So things get a little bit desperate and wallpaper and uh, and stuff like that really becomes a, a neither here nor there type uh, priority. But you can see now that look, we have all these rooms now you can also see that a lot of them are empty because again i'm allowing for expansion of these departments that we've not yet opened these three here um so these are all the um doctor's offices uh, for, for across all the departments we can see here we've got emergency and we still have one available which we I, i've been in this situation this has been a doctor's office this has also been um a staff room um and i, I haven't quite decided the best use for it yet um, these staff rooms going in ha have helped all the doctors, of course, in this building. Um, and we do have days where emergency, particularly when events kick off, where this room being active would probably help. But most days, on normal days, they probably wouldn't do a lot. So yeah, I haven't quite decided on that yet. I thought I'd let the hospital build up some more before I decide uh, what I want to do with it. And we can see here, look, that we've got doctor offices what's going on uh, oh ooh. what's going on with this guy can we see oh no look internal medicine here and i've uh, colored my departments uh, as well so green rooms are always going to be internal medicine um the orange is always uh, emergency although red is icu um pink will be cardiology uh, the purple will be neurology uh, this here is general surgery, the blue, um, and then the yellow is going to be the orthopedy uh, department. Um, and then this I've uh, used um, the turquoise or teal, I'm not sure uh, which you'd rather call this, um, as sort of the main hospital theme colour. Um, so if there are corridors that don't really belong to a particular department, I've just gone with this look. Uh, yeah, oh look, oh look, they've done it. Is it really necessary to send them for a CT? I feel like that's a bit over bit over the top a bit over the top so there we are right so this is this is the entrance uh, to the hospital 
Back in the early days of this hospital, we got to a point where we needed to build an emergency wing of the hospital, a whole area dedicated to the trauma centre and also the emergency regular ward uh, for observation. And like the previous themes of this hospital, it was absolute chaos, it was ugly, it was dirty, and there was stuff everywhere, there was no order, and nothing ran smoothly at all. It was just plop things down so we could try and cram in more patients uh, in order to try and make more money. Uh, at this point, I think it was just trying to get the hospital to be profitable at all, let alone saving money to improve the hospital. Well, I can tell you a lot has changed in emergency. Feast your eyes on this. <gasps> There's so much stuff here. It's almost, it's it's quite, it's quite mind-boggling how much stuff there is here. Um, the first thing uh, to note is that I've actually changed. I swapped over the sides. Trauma centre is actually over here and uh, we actually have the regular ward over here. A couple of reasons. It was easier to build it that way because I made a lot of mess over here. Um, so it was easier just to start from over here. Um, but also the doors. So we have here the doors coming into the department from the rest of the hospital. And it made sense for patients to walk into the ward area and not walk into trauma because God knows what they would see if they walked into here. This is this is not stuff you want the general public to be able to walk straight into. This, of course, has its own entrance. Look, there's blood everywhere. This has its own entrance uh, through here. Um, and another really nice feature, actually, of the services DLC pack is that in build mode, you can now move your drop-off point for your emergency ambulance. So I think it was somewhere down here and I've shifted it up uh, this way um, so that I could uh, just move these doors, allowing me to make a better ward area here. And we can see that I've made a little a little nook here for our nurses that uh, are set for patient care. Um, there's a couple of, of those here. And then we've also got the staff area and, and the staff toilet for them. But then for the patients on this wall, we've also got um, uh, toilets, restrooms for, for anybody to use. And a little hangout spot as well for anybody that's actually on this department, along with being able to get some food and drink. Um, yeah. And we can see here that the uh, doctor's office and nurse's office separates these two spaces and that they can quickly run um, either side, um, uh, which I felt was pretty good, pretty important. And then we've got a whole bunch of uh, trauma centers here. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, because we've got one here tucked away and we've got one here. So we've got seven of them, which... Um, I came to later realise that the new events that kick off, you tend to get a maximum of eight patients um, because I think that's the maximum that you can fit on the little card on the side. Um, and uh, typically I've got seven uh, trauma centres. But to be fair, they are very rarely full. Um, it does happen though. <laughs> it does happen. Um, and uh, I'm sure that we will see that uh, in, in, in the future down the line. Um, I'm thinking that I haven't assigned this space. I think this is red because I've said no patients here, but I don't think it's actually been assigned. You can see here we've got a janitor, so I think we will uh, just change that. Yeah, not uh, accessible for patients. I think we'll just uh, have the janitor um, <laughs> clean that up because it's, it's a bit nasty. You'll notice here actually in the staff room that we've got a tray of sandwiches and a coffee machine. So again, these are new items from the DLC and we will get into the DLC. Um, <clears throat> I've not used much of it at all, just a little bit of it. I've certainly used the items though. The items, the new DLC items are all over this hospital. Um, uh, but the uh, but we can look fun uh, we can look fun we can look forward to uh, exploring the new uh, departments uh, the admin administrative department and pathology uh, together from the new DLC. What's going on with you? You're fine. You're fine. <laughs> so there we are. Um, the doctor's office. These doctors we've got um, on this the desks on this side look after. Uh, these sorts of patients and then we can see here that we've got our trauma uh, doctors that look after 
this side and then this room is all um stretcher nurses all these nurses deal in moving the stretchers around and of course when i designed this space what i didn't take into consideration was how patients were going to get from this side to this side and of course the only way is to come straight through this office so that's what they do and this is why i've put this white path through and i've tried to make it a, a, a very good far through thorough through for um these stretcher patients so these stretcher nurses uh can just bring them through here no problem at all because occasionally you do get patients that come in on an ambulance and they're you know screaming and crying that they've got broken bones in their arms their legs their rib cage and all this sort of business and then you find out that all that it is is like some sort of contusion in their hand and they just need some numbing ointment and then you send them on their way and they just get up from trauma and walk off like how much of a hypochondriac do you want to be and of course they just walk straight through this office and out the door um uh talking about that actually numbing ointment in this game is is a huge thing i i remember joking about this on the streams that it seems that you just go through gallons and gallons and gallons of numbing ointment have you noticed that in this game um and i swear they're just what i need in this hospital is a, a huge cupboard just filled with numbing ointment because we go through gallons every day i swear to god um everybody just needs numbing ointment in this game uh it's it, it solves all it absolutely solves all um do you know one thing i have noticed is that I think I have five stretcher nurses but only keep four stretchers out here um, so that might be something I want to look at I might want to try and sneak in an extra stretcher somewhere that would be that would be good now of course the emergency department wouldn't be anything without its ambulances and of course I was slowly building up an ambulance collection um, outside of the hospital and that has now changed check out the ambulance car park now <gasps> it's not there anymore <laughs> so another feature of the dlc is that you can now move um in fact i'm not sure if it, if it came with the dlc it was part of the updates because of course a lot of updates happen so it could actually just be moving the uh drop-off bay and the ambulance parking might not be a dlc feature it might just be um part of one of the very many updates that have occurred to this game uh, in the time that uh, i wasn't making a series um and i'm honestly not sure so please do let me know in the comments below was it part of the dlc or is it just part of an update so i moved the ambulances close to um emergency right next to emergency and i've done a thing here are my ambulances and actually if i show you here look i've built this sort of parking bay for them um <laughs> i would put a wall around here but it's too close to the edge of the map so i actually can't I, I wanted them to be secure in there but i mean they're secure right they're as secure as they're going to get um so yeah i've built this little area and the idea was that this would be um a uh like a mechanics yard that maintains the ambulances right um and so i built like this little mechanic area now it's ended up actually being put into use you can actually see here a member of staff coming over because and this is why this is being activated uh this department here um because you can now employ janitor managers so this this uh jordan here is the manager of all my janitors um, it's a whole new specialization if a manager is hired for the administrative department he she increases the overall efficiency of all janitors in the hospital and allows you to assign janitors to individual rooms how amazing is that this employee also acts as the boss of all janitors that is amazing so you can now pop on here and assign specific rooms to specific janitors a feature i'm sure that we will be taking advantage of in the future so i employed a bunch of uh, janitors and i've put his office over here this office was already here and this room was already here so i have taken away some of the things that looked more like a tool shed for mechanics and put more cleaning stuff in um, <clears throat> to cater for this but at least the building's being used <clears throat> not the most efficient <laughs> 
because of course the Janices they come here and then they just have to walk all over the hospital um, <laughs> but there you are uh, I like it I like that this building is actually getting some use <clears throat> um, that there's a bit of life outside of here I, I like that I do I like that so let's talk wards uh, when I originally designed uh, the ward which I did before I started the stream so I ended up just pasting it into the hospital I designed my own ward I popped that in it was designed in such a way that I was aware that visitors for your ward patients was going to be a feature in the future but I wasn't entirely sure how it was going to be implemented um, so at the time I put a chair next to the bed with a plant and sort of made the space big enough to allow a visitor to come and sit by their bedside um, but it turns out that um, it, this is not how the visiting system works uh, in Projects Hospital that's fine that's absolutely fine so how they do it is they have a lounge space and then the visitors and the patients uh, sit at a particular lounge uh, chair item um, so I had to redesign my wards just a little bit um, and here we are the new wards I found that 10 beds uh oh uh oh uh oh oh code blue for this lady she's gone into septic shock can we get her some antibiotics I also like her to have the other things um, so we've actually got um, she's had her surgery so it's possible that she's just got an infection um, but look there could also be other things occurring here um, she hasn't yet had the micro bowel sampling to find out whether she has bacteria uh, growing here that's that's a bit of a shame uh, she's had she's had the surgery though hasn't she yeah so this physical examination could just discover that she's got an infection from this surgery we might also put a CRP in here um, although that wouldn't be causing actually let's take that off that wouldn't be causing the um this yeah okay well there we are stay safe Nancy <laughs> <laughs> Stay safe, Nancy. Um, yeah, so I found that 10 beds really wasn't enough uh, for the the wards. Um, and I think I've now managed to add three extra. So this is general surgery, denoted by the blue. Uh, yeah, so I've managed to get it up to 13 beds per department. And to be honest, again, they, they max out quite a lot. And there's not really much I can do about that. It just is what it is now. I have no more room to dedicate. <laughs> um, so yeah, let's let's take a look around. I've actually also upgraded the nurses. Oh, the, oh, there's not enough stretchers for all the patients that need transport. You see, this there are there are there are problems. There's only I'm pretty sure six stretcher nurses though. We're going to ignore that for the moment because. Um, we can deal with this all in the future. Let's uh, remain focused for the moment. I think this is the first time I've ever seen all the stretchers out. Uh, yeah, so I've always had this little office here, but it always had uh, just one nurse inside there. And again, it, it was a, a patient care nurse, but she was very much overworked. Um, and again, it was the same over here. And so when I came to redesign this, I felt it was time to get a second nurse into this space. And it was very difficult because I didn't want to uh, increase the size of this, of this office. So trying to find a way to get another nurse in there was pretty tricky but I like this because it it, it it is like a little reception area as you come into the ward and then this window allows her to observe them and because we've got these glass panes all the way down it allows her to observe right down there right down the line at the end here we have um the the area for the patients to come uh, go to the toilet, watch a bit of TV, read some books. Um, and again, you can see here, look, new DLC items, selection of drinks and sandwiches, uh, which does work perfectly well for food and drink. And we also have the coffee machine here and this area. So this is the area. I've made it like a little privacy type nook space. These are the chairs for um, visitors to come and meet. Now, really, two on each... Is not enough it's not enough um, and I'm going to have to expand the lounge area it's gonna to have to spill out into corridors um, but I haven't quite come up with a design yet that I'm happy with but I've made this entire area the lounge area uh, so visitors can also um, benefit from the 
the toilets and, and whatnot. So there we are. And look, I actually decorated these gardens out here. I found, um, I always plan to put these out here, but I've noticed that um, they would walk through these fences. These fences and the glass ones, didn't matter which one I had, they would just walk straight through them. They don't seem to be an obstruction to staff at all. It was extremely annoying. So I decorated these gardens to see, because I'm pretty sure these are obstructive items. Turns out they completely are, and now they don't come out this back door and start pushing stretchers over the grass. Um, that was mighty annoying. Um, and these lights would be nice if we could put these lights outside, um, but we can't, so there we are. Um, yeah. So the rest of the department then, look at this! Whoa! So this was always largely here, but I've had a bit of a tweak of the area. So you can see here that we've got uh, three diagnostic rooms. I've also got three um, doctors dedicated to the uh, well-being of the patients that are, are on these wards. Um, and that seems to be holding up pretty well. Um, but I've redesigned, completely redesigned this area. Just to see if we can see how it's broken up a little bit easier. So they've got their staff room here. This area has um, hand sanitizer along with uh, their lockers. And then they can enter the staff room here or they can go into the offices. And you can see here that we've got this nurse area and these are all stretcher nurses here. Um, although I have set one to both health, uh, to patient care and stretchers um, and I may have to change that back as we've got stretcher problems uh, since changing that. Uh, and then we've got the toilet as well which is accessed uh, through here. Um, so it's very pokey, I know, it's very pokey but it's got everything that it needs in there. It's got everything that it needs. <laughs> <laughs> and I like to try and make sure that this is a new item as well, this uh, first aid cabinet. I like to make sure that the staff rooms have first aid cabinets. And when you walk into new departments, I like to try and have hand sanitizers available at certain points in the hospital. Um, yeah. So there we are. This is this is general surgery. Uh, it's always been here in this part of the wing, but it, it's just had a, a little bit of love and care. Moving on to this area, which has always been a bit of a shambles once again. The idea of this area is that all of the special diagnostic rooms across all departments will be here. Um, they'll all be kept together um, because, of course, walk-in patients as well as ward patients use this space so I needed them accessible for both so all the wards will be in this huge building going upwards so easily accessible through the lift system but also quite close for all these patients to just walk in and and get what they need from from these rooms um, so that's that's the logic behind the layout here um, and we're only using at the moment three. So for general surgery, look, we've um, we've got sonography and we've also got car uh, cardiography here um, and another cardiography for internal medicine here. And there's actually more rooms here than there are these rooms across all the departments, but it just allows for a little bit of overflow. If, if any of them start to become critical um, every day, then... Uh, I can put in duplicates uh, if needs be. And then we've got a, a public toilet over here. And do you know what? I think I might make this. Uh, I've got no plans for this room at all. I might make this the numbing ointment cupboard. <laughs> might have a look through the mods because this game does now have mods available. And there's some really great mods out there. <laughs> numbing, numbing ointment cabinets. Um, yeah, so there we are. Um, so that's that's. The whole ground floor, in fact. It's the whole ground floor covered. Now, what I would say is that it doesn't really change much beyond here in terms of these departments. So if we go up one, in, internal medicine is pretty much exactly the same. However, there has been a change to internal medicine um, since I last made content on Project Hospital. There is no longer surgery for internal medicine. They got rid of it doesn't exist anymore and instead we have this room this is the room where they do all of their internal medicine procedures now um, the special procedures unit <laughs> so I took out one of their diagnostic units and put in this special procedures unit here because it didn't need to take up a surgery space but what I have noticed about this 
is that it takes each procedure does take a lot of time very similar in time to a surgery um, so it it is very difficult to get a lot of patients through here quickly and something that as the hospital grows you know this could easily become overwhelmed it certainly has done in the past so the best way i think at the moment given my space um, restrictions is to just keep everything so efficient um, that you know the staff don't need to go far to deal with all of their needs and are always very happy so that they can just bish bash bosh through the queues as quickly as possible and they don't need to go very far she's she sits right here and she's got all of her amenities and then she can just come here um, so yeah and then this is the department ready and available for uh, cardiology which is actually the next uh, no sorry uh, orthopedic department <clears throat> which is going to be the next department that will will slam in I think <clears throat> possibly or we might do some of the DLC stuff because there is something that I'd like to do with the DLC sooner rather than later so what I've noticed is that even though I've activated visitors uh, from the new DLC stuff in this area I've noticed that when they do get visitors the patients walk away from the visit unhappy that they didn't receive a gift <laughs> um, uh, and of course one of the new DLC departments is the gift store um, so we will I'd like to build it soon um, and I was thinking that this area would be because uh, of course I've not actually you know built this design with a gift store in mind um so i have to come up with something new to add to it so i was thinking about building essentially a row of shops here um we've got some parking and i thought we would make yeah like a little shopping area here and it could be the gift store it can look like magazines and clothes and stuff like that then you can now build pharmacies so i was thinking this would also be a good spot for a pharmacy um and then just because two doesn't seem enough for uh, a little row of shops three seems like enough we will build um, a small cafeteria here to make it look like a like a calf for everybody to use um, yeah but I have I have a main calf um, that I'm going to build in this hospital which back when I was doing the stream was going to make a faux calf um, and now I can actually make it a real one because it's a thing in the game now. So uh, looking forward to doing the, the big real calf. Um, so yeah. Um, now, there's been quite a lot of changes in x-ray. So we've got x-ray across here. Um, and you can see it's much better than it used to be. X-ray was an absolute shambles. Uh, like the entire hospital was, really. Um and uh, I was just putting in the uh, x-ray is so expensive uh, radiology machines are just so expensive so it, it was very much um, you know get the minimum that I could to make it functional for patients to use you can now see here that I've actually used the prefabs that come with the game uh, I am going to change them up at some point give them a bit of TLC um, uh, because I, I do like to to make my own this is a sandbox I feel like I should be designing my own um, but, you know, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And these are pretty good, right? Haven't sorted out the um, the waiting area particularly. But it does it does feel a bit empty and barren and, and could use some, some love, I think. Um, so I added a second one. I think we had one of these. One of these. Um, let's uh, click on to radiology. I think we had one of these. Uh, I can't remember what this is. What room is this? I cannot remember. This is CT room, <laughs> okay. Um, I think we had one CT room, we now have two. We had one X-ray, we now have two. And I have now also added one MRI machine. And the hospital is already starting to really want a second MRI machine. You can see how I've made space for it over here. Um, there is enough room to have two of every single radiology room in here. And then if it's not enough, it's sort of tough at that point. Um, there, there's there's no more room there is no more room for radiology and this here is where I always plan to put like a faux calf so I've added in some toilets because they don't really have any in radiology so it felt necessary to get some toilets in here pretty quickly um, but yeah this is where we're going to have the actual real cafeteria that, that we can have now so I'm looking forward to building this I've not messed around with the cafeteria at this moment in time or the pharmacy or anything like that I'm going to be uh, fiddling with those uh, forums critical going to be fiddling with those 
um, for the first time blind. It's going to be it's going to be fun. I'm looking forward to it. And then across this sky bridge, we have the labs um, just above emergency, um, and of course a sky bridge away um, or a lift shaft away from all the wards. Um, and we've got two of the labs. Uh, we've still got one more lab uh, to build. Uh, she looks like she's in a rough way, doesn't she? Yeah, let's put her on the code blue, please. There we go. <laughs> um, I've had some problems with this department because what I really want to do is when they come out of here to um, give their results to anybody in the waiting room, I actually want them to come up here and come to this door and call the patient. But they don't. They come out of this door, call here, and then the patient comes through this door, collects and goes again. And I cannot get it to stop doing that. I cannot get them to come up here. I've even set this entire area not accessible for patients, right? This whole area is a denied area for patients and yet they still come through here and they will not bring it out here. I've even tried expanding um, the blueprints of the rooms so they come out of here and go all the way up and have three doors here so they got their individual doors to try and make it so that they thought they were still in the room and that the exit was actually over here. Didn't work, they still came out this door. And so technically asking patients to come inside this room. Ridiculous, absolutely ridiculous. I don't know what was going on there. Don't know, I don't don't know why this won't work, but it won't. Um, so I'm a bit upset about that, quite honestly, a bit upset about that. But look, they've got this lovely garden up here now. Um, something I wanted to do uh, was give them a little garden up here, a little outdoor space. Um, yeah. Uh, so, and it's just uh, above this emergency area here. Nice and noisy, I suspect, is what this garden would be. Um, and then, yeah, across here, of course, is where we'll have some more departments. So that's a whole other floor of the hospital. Look at that! The ICU was an ongoing issue in the Stream Hospital. Um, it was such a Mickey Mouse operation, I can't even begin to tell you. This woman's only crashing from septic shock, everyone. Don't all rush at once. The hell? <laughs> Sorry, I don't want to get in the way of your coffee, but we have a situation unfolding. Oh! <laughs> Doctor's on it. I don't know where he came from. Where was he? Where on earth was he? Looks like he went out for a fag or something. I then managed to be able to afford some uh, prefabs of the ICU, which are, I slammed down in the area that I was planning on putting the ICU, um, but could o only got as high as six beds. It was always at max. It, it wasn't very efficient. The layout was bad. And it was too much work to try and, while the hospital was up and running, to rejig that space. It was so rammed with patients that I, I couldn't really rejig it. Really, ideally, ICU had to be moved away. Plus, I needed the space up there for other things. So I did move ICU and built a whole new um, area on top of a floor um, above radiology then that used to just be roof space well not anymore now we have a new icu department here it is oh, and it's also quite good because of course this lift shaft um uh, is connected to the labs and it's also connected to emergency um and through this sky bridge uh, and lift shaft to all the walls as well so um it's nice that it's here and it has expanded look we've got 10 I believe um, 10 ICU beds now yes um, and that seems to most of the time be pretty good sometimes in emergency situations when these events kick off this can be this can be prob problematic particularly if we get two events following each other quite quickly um, but yeah look look and they can rush them in and shove them straight in a bed um, I like that about it um, but of course we need an area for all the staff so we can see here that we have the ICU nurses here in like another little reception area and here we have like a little lab space and scrubs area for the doctors and staff to, to do all the bits that they need to do and then through here we have the doctor's office um, and the janitor's uh, room as well uh, through here yeah, and they're all, all clearly off doing things. And then back here, of course, is the staff area for all of these uh, 
peeplings. We've got uh, a little area here, again with the lockers into the toilets and then the staff area over here. But also um, I've tried to retain another sort of outdoor space. Uh, not decorated yet, it hasn't been landscaped, but it's there, it exists. And it can also be accessed uh, from this end as well. And I'm thinking about putting another garden here also. Yes. Um, and I was here in this room, even back then, I was thinking about putting a faux training room. But now the DLC gives us a training room properly, officially. So that's what we'll be building here. This hospital has it already in place, ready to go. So that's that's what we'll be coming into here. Um, and interestingly, I've always planned to put um, a faux helipad out here as though helicopters land they can rush them in here jump in the lift take them down to trauma um i'm i will continue with that plan to put a faux uh, helipad out here but helicopter emergencies are something planned for the game it is um on their roadmap it is something they absolutely plan to do it could even be in the next major dlc update that they do who knows um and i'm hoping that we will be able to put these helipads on roofs and that we don't necessarily have to put them on the floor so that i'll be able to rip out my faux one and replace it with an actual one and that this will be able to function properly but who knows what <laughs> how it will actually work so that'll be interesting i will build the fake one we'll see how it goes uh, looking forward to that and then this building has nothing in it this will be the last two departments this will be cardiology and neurology um so it'll have a similar sort of layout to um this one below it uh, as you can see we've got enough space here for their wards and for this to repeat over here so it'll be nice and easy to build these just expensive and then the top floor our brand new revamped surgeries uh yes yes very much inspired in fact some of these areas are uh, inspired from uh, some of the campaign hospitals that come with the game you know it, again just some of them were really really nice i've built all the rooms ready for the different departments because we've lost internal medicine as a surgery we now only have four surgery rooms rather than five which is absolutely fantastic news i like that even number about it um i remember when i was designing this space um on the streams i was frustrated by that fifth surgery so it, it was it was a real blessing that change um and yeah so we've got i've doubled up as you can see so at the moment we only have surgery for uh, general surgery um, but we've got the others prepped ready to go and we have two enormous offices here um, like battery farms of doctors and nurses <laughs> um, and this has been set up this was a nightmare these two rooms were an absolute nightmare if we come into here I've set it up in such a way that we'll be able to get all the surgery two surgery teams across all departments for all these surgeries um, and it was like playing Tetris with all these desks to try and make it that there was a, the right amount of desks within each zone um, yeah so that there was two teams for every <coughs> surgery room um, yeah not easy that this this was not an easy thing to pull off um, and I know that this looks quite simple and straightforward but it was actually quite surprising how long it took me to come up with this design because I was trying to do something a bit more intricate like I've done over here with with the nurses but it just wasn't it just wasn't feasible because I didn't want desks right by toilet doors there was all sorts of things going weird things going through my mind it's like I don't want you know because who would want to sit at that desk you know they're going in and out of the toilets would you want to be at a desk that's you know people are budging past you to get into the toilets no nobody wants to sit there nobody wants that desk so i had to try and come up with the design that you know allowed distance here <laughs> and so i've put up these little walls as well just so that you know just to try and <laughs> cut it down you'd rather be over here somewhere wouldn't you not not over here <laughs> and uh, and then the nurses and the doctors are sharing uh, this space here a very uh, small nook we've got um we've actually got quite a few toilets here we've got a toilet here a toilet here and a toilet here i felt with the amount of staff that was here we were going to need a few and uh, this is largely sofas in here so i've actually used the office spaces to house a lot of food and drink 
um, just because of how tight this area was. Uh, I think more sofa space than a TV to sit down and uh, relax in a more comfortable seat was probably more preferable um, than putting all this garbage inside here. Uh, yeah, so that we've uh, we've managed to keep this, and then we'll um, put a lovely garden out here. Uh, yeah. Look at that. So that's, that is the hospital as it stands at the moment. Of course, though, we've got pathology to come in. And um, I've been thinking, I, I never built an area for pathology. I never thought a computer game would cover such a macabre thing. So anyway, it, it is. And we will take a look at it. Um, so I think this is actually where um, pathology is going to be. I don't think I'm going to need a lot of space for pathology. This hospital doesn't kill a lot of patients. Um, and... So I don't think I'm going to need a lot in in that area. Oh, look at this. Renovation of a nearby clinic causes 50% more patients to come to emergency. There we go. So uh, it's a, like a little minor event that's uh, kicking off there. And that means tomorrow morning, uh, this space will probably be absolutely rammed with patients. Um, yeah. There we are. So there we are. This is Royal Peeping Hospital as it stands so far. Pretty much everything that was there during the streams is just being cleaned up and decorated and made very, very nice. It's taken a lot of time and money uh, to get this done. Um, but I felt that this would be a nice platform, uh, much more satisfying to build on this hospital in this state. Uh, than it was for this series so that we can explore doctor mode we can explore events we can explore sandbox a bit more and we can also explore of course the new uh well it's not so new now <laughs> it's been out a couple of months i think dlc um that came out that uh, has just so many new features and rooms and toys to play with and i'm very very excited uh, to get stuck into it if you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe. Thank you to all my Patreons for their continued support.